Mr. Blake, how you doing? Good, good. A little snow here in Chicago. Hi, Troy. How you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm good. Good. <sighs> Eddie. <laughs> hey, hey. What's that golf hole back behind your right shoulder? The picture. Big one here? Yeah. This is uh, hole number 16 at the club at Porta Chima in Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri. Cool. Looks like it's out in the, out in the lake. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a Got a little place up there and um, this came with it. So it's a pretty cool little <laughs> hole, downhill par five, just over probably 530 yards from the back tees. And uh, you get to see the lake from tee box to green. So fun that's hole cool. to play uh, when you take clients and friends out there. Um, that's, the, that's the one that we're always taking pictures on. That's great. You like got all I always have to have the signature hole, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, I got uh number seven at Pebble, and then I've got um uh, 17 at Sawgrass as well, right next to it. Um and, and a Crestview one over here. So working on the collection. <laughs> What's going on, Eddie? Hey, Michael. How are we doing, guys? Mr. Ward, good to see you. Beautiful golf weather out there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Michael, it's Chris. Did you watch the LSU game the other night? Chris, I very unfortunately watched that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I sure did. Yeah, I put it on. I turned it off at halftime. I can't remember if the Bachelor was on, but <laughs> it was enough. I had to change it. You know, I n I don't know if there's any K State fans. I don't think any on here yet. I, I know it was their Super Bowl. Hello. Uh, that's not true. <laughs> well, I, didn't, I didn't. I didn't see you there. I know it was yeah. like. A, it was like a Super Bowl game. You know, it was this really big game for K State, but. Uh, I was proud, Chris, of the guys that did play, man. That was that showed a lot of heart from those guys. No, I was too. I mean, I I know what they were gonna, you know, be faced with. And uh, I actually had a little side bet with a friend of mine. He he said he'll take LSU. He thought LSU was gonna win because of the SEC. I said I'll take K State. <laughs> so it was yep. a finan it was financially advantageous. There you go. <laughs> I like your background, Nancy. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Wishful thinking. <laughs> Someday I'm going to try to figure out how you do that, Nancy, how you get the. Oh, Niall, it's the... really, really easy. Those three dots up there by where, where the conversation bar and stuff is. Yeah. If you click on that and then it says apply background effect. It does. Uh -huh. After, when you click on those three dots at the top, and then it, and then the, the drop down, there's apply background effect, and it gives you some options, but you can also add your own pictures too. Yeah, we'll do it for you. I mean, there's three dots. Uh, you see the three dots? Look at Nancy being tech savvy. <laughs> <laughs> if I could do it, it's a free game for anybody. Hey, Richard, how you feeling? Hello, yeah, I'm, uh, I am scheduled for surgery in Chicago on February 18th. Oh, we, we wish you all the best. Yeah, what kind of surgery are you scheduled for? 
Uh, this will be my 10th hip replacement, but it's, um, it's quite involved and um, uh, it's a deal that they caught um, by accident and saved my life. Wow. Oh. Good. Well, we we certainly wish you all the best. Yeah, I asked him um, when I got finished the surgery, was I going to be able to beat Eddie? And he said, um, don't plan on it. And golf? Well, poker, I mean, anything. <laughs> Always a puncher's chance, right? Yeah. In, a run, <laughs> in, in a race, no doubt. Yeah. Um, but now he said if it's successful, I'll be playing golf by May. So awesome. I like to think this, this doctor is... The best in in the United States at revisions, so got a good chance. Well, by May the uh, the snow should be cleared out. Well, by the so you have a good day. You're looking good. But, but he's yep. dead. He strokes. So anybody's thinking. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, call this meeting to order. I think uh, most everybody, if not everybody, is. Already here. Um, are there any uh, announcements or public comments, Penny? None that I'm aware of. No, uh, no minutes to approve, but as always, um, the link uh, to the YouTube URL is provided in the uh, agenda. Uh, new items for consideration uh, 2A improvements for 22. Troy? Troy, you're muted. All right, so now I'm not muted. So uh, looking at the agenda, giving up uh, an update on the golf management services that's coming up on item three. But um, one of the things that I've been talking about, sharing with you guys is that uh, right now we're following two paths. One, this uh, with the RFP in regards to the golf management, but I have to plan and assume that that might not happen. And so um, I also have to make sure that everything's in place for us to continue to operate. And so we've been um, fortunate this past year. We had a really, really good year. And we've been talking a lot about the revenues. And, and Nancy, hopefully I can answer one of your questions that you sent to us um, a little bit later on. But financially, we did pretty well. And like last year, I was able to put some money back into the courses. And that's something I want to do again, make sure that we put money back into the courses. I had evaluations with the staff a couple weeks ago. And um, one of the messages I told them was uh, that there's three things that we really want to focus on as we, you know, if we move down the path and we keep this internal. And first of all, first and foremost is to hire staff. So once we figure out what's going to happen with um the, the management contract uh if we end up keeping it in house the very very first thing i'm going to be doing is hiring some some staff uh, the second thing is still making improvements to our irrigation system we've been spending a lot of money on all the pump systems i think we put some information out on facebook that showed uh some of the work that's happening over at uh i think it was over at text that we were doing some irrigation uh, repairs and but we're actually doing pump irrigation repairs at all the golf courses. And so the, the next item after that is equipment replacement. And uh, and so those are the three big things that I want to work on in regards to staff. What I want to work on with the golf advisory committee is once I get a decision on what which way we're going, and even if this is with something that we're going to do with um, uh, the golf management team, uh, those items I think are still important that, and that we really want to address. But the other things I really want to address through the golf advisory committee are those two items, that those pesky items that keep squirreling away from us. And one of them is uh, addressing um, our golf carts and putting in a replacement plan for that. And, you know, we've talked about an extra dollar set aside uh, for each one of the uh, carts that are rented and that would go into an, an equipment replacement fund for the golf carts. 
very similar to what we've done with all of our other equipment. And the other one is really kind of focusing down on the passes. And um, we know that uh, we are not getting our, the, the golf division is not getting the, our money's worth on the passes that they're very underpriced. And so there's some things that we can do to make some adjustments on that. So those are going to be the things I really want to work on and focus on in 2022 once we decide uh, where we're going with um, the management. And, and even those topics are still going to be important when we if, if we do go with the management team. So I just wanted to make sure you guys knew about that. And um, and if you can start thinking about uh, where, when and how we can have discussions about those items. So on the agenda I have equipment services and fees. Um, it'd be really important that we can start thinking about that. So when we have a decision, we can start uh, talking about that and, and make some changes if we need to, if that's something that you guys think we need to start following through. But I think we've all talked about it and know that it could happen and should happen. So and I saw um, uh, Mr. Shordorf had his hand up. Um, so. Yeah, one one thing I I would just uh, bring up to think about adding to your to your list would be um, improvements to uh, concessions, both the um, ability to s serve concessions on the course and um, improvements to uh, minor improvements to the facilities. Because if you remember, um, Mark. Um, uh, came uh, last time he came to the meeting. He uh, again for the um, whatever met the time said that um, that's an area that if we invest in that we might actually be able to uh, um, bring in um, far more than our investments. So um, I, I hope that that's something that we can talk about um, either way. Yeah, I think that is, but I'm looking at our priorities that if we don't have irrigation, we don't have grass. If we don't have grass, we don't have golf. Uh, the other one is if we don't have equipment to maintain that grass, uh, we don't have golf. Um, so from my perspective, my priorities is to make sure we have golf. Uh, if we have opportunities to invest in other areas such as food and beverage, most definitely, I think that that's a great opportunity and there's always a return on that investment. Uh, but if if I don't make those first priorities um, happen, uh, then, then we don't have golf. So that's kind of where yeah, I'm looking at my priorities. I'm not asking to replace those. I'm just saying that I think we can uh, look at uh, a variety of different things. And um, it, it, it has to have lead time to, to look at the different options for like uh, course uh, cards that you can take out on the course that uh, could possibly sell uh, a high dollar number of uh, volume like um, uh, beer. Um, and and again, we, we have to start the conversation because we've left so much on the table. Thank you. Sure. But again, like I mentioned, if we don't have our infrastructure in place and our resources to maintain the golf courses, uh, none of that even, even matters. So that, that to me is my highest priority. So. Um, that was basically what I wanted to share in regards to what we want to do for improvements for 2022. Um, Nancy. Troy, I yeah, yeah. I, I just have a question. My understanding is that there has been an equipment fund for some time. There is. OK, and is there a balance in there at this time? So we're talking about two different items here. One is the equipment replacement fund for mowing equipment or some of the, the, the heavier pieces. And what I'd like to do is have an equipment replacement fund for the carts um, so we can continually have an opportunity to replace the carts um, on a regular basis instead of the last time we replaced them we spent over a million dollars that came from uh, CIP dollars and the general fund it didn't come from the enterprise fund uh, I was able to um, convince the city manager to be able to spend that money uh, but I don't think we'll have that opportunity next time around so we need to make sure that we have ample funds to continue to make replacements and upgrades to our uh, golf cart fleet. 
OK, I my understanding was that dollar that was added that wasn't for carts. That was for operating equipment. That's correct. Yeah, okay. and that's what I'm saying is we we probably want to maybe look at this idea of adding a cart and a dollar to the cart rentals for replacement of the carts. Does that make sense? OK, and then uh, to, to further answer your question, we have a, an equipment replacement fund uh, and we spent over three hundred thousand dollars on the mowers, uh, several different type of to Toro mowers that we purchased uh, this past fall and summer. So we were able to get a good deal on that. So that's exactly what that, that's for, and we were successful in making that happen. Okay. Let's see. Let me see if Amazon. Oh, uh, Richard, do you have another question? No, just a, a point that I I think that um, my memory serves me that we um, um, did a study and, uh, uh, and and maybe we should look at it uh, again. But uh, at the time, I think the cart rentals will take a, a lot more than a dollar increase. I think we uh, ought to be looking at fifteen dollars. I thought that's what we voted on last time. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of money um, that. Uh, may be out there for a variety of things um, in addition to the one dollar. So that's I, I, I agree and I think we're talking about two different things. One would be actually uh, an extra surcharge of a dollar for a replacement fund, but also increasing the fees for golf carts uh, is another item as well. So yeah. All right, so Emma, uh, you're on. Um, if you can provide a quick report. Well, you know what? Let me do the. Uh, let me let me do the rounds report first. OK, oh, that works. All right, I'm going to share my screen with everybody. Can everybody see the the report? Nope, not yet. How about there. now? All right. So December was much better than what I anticipated it to be. So um, for December 21, with all community uh, rounds for 2021, we had a total for the whole year of just over 177,000 rounds, which is amazing from my perspective. So um, for the month of December, we had really good weather um, all through the beginning of December, and we were really close to about 9,500 rounds, um, which is probably one of the best Decembers we've ever had. So that was really good to see that. End of the year for cart rentals, uh, $1.26 million. And of course, that was an increase from, from last year. And you can see from previous years, um, looks like we've been in steadily improving. Uh, food and beverage. So we have about $140,000 more this year in food and beverage than we did in 2020. So that that's the end of the year total right there is that 488,000. Uh, memberships. Um, we lost two memberships in December from November, um, but we are always expecting that in um, January and February, as you start getting ready for the next year, that those memberships are going to improve and uh, that number will get get larger. Uh, for the driving range, obviously, um, prior to 2020, we're looking at 19, 18, and 17. We only had two two driving ranges. Now we have three, and. Um, from last year, we had an improvement um, of roughly uh, almost 25,000. Is that right? Let's see. Five, eight. Yeah, roughly right, close to 25,000 um, more opportunities on the driving range as, as far as dollars, $25,000 increase from, from last year. So, um, those are all good numbers. Uh, again, we had a, an excellent, excellent year. And with our 
reports that we get back from uh, our users and, and we've been getting a lot of positive feedback. So we've been really hearing some good things about this past year. So um, some other items on the report uh, in regards to the weather and, and maintenance. So I think we sent that out to you earlier this week, but yeah, it, it just really good information, really good numbers. I'm really excited that I thought we would get oh roughly about 165,000 rounds, but uh, we made that and then some by 12,000 rounds. So uh, lots of work for our staff as well. Any questions on the rounds report? Niall, you have a question? Oh, Niall, you're on, on mute. Oh, there you go. Am I there? Yep, now you're there. OK. Something, something on this is really goofy because my audio is, is bad and my video is bad. I'm going to drop off this meeting and try to come back in and see if that clears it up. OK, otherwise, well, uh, otherwise this is just crazy over right here. All right, we'll click you back in once you come back in. In the meantime, Thanks. I think uh, Mr. Shordorf, you had a question. Yeah, I've done I've done some um, preliminary work and um, it's we're kind of bucking the national trend. Um, you know, a lot of folks were talking about the decrease in in golf as uh, the rest of the economy started opening up and. Um, as far as I can tell, uh, the numbers support that uh, that um, happening uh, in a, a lot of the United States, but we seem to be bucking that trend. And um, and I know we have to make adjustments to to memberships when we should have two years ago, but um, but I, th I think the membership system is working and just needs to be tweaked. I agree. All right, any other questions in regards to the rounds report? OK. We will go. Let's see if uh, now kicks back on. All right, Mr. Dillmore. You're back on. Well, that's that's great. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. OK, so that part's working. Is the camera working? Yep, we can see you and hear you. So if you got right. if you got a question about the rounds report. No, I don't. I'm it sounded like well, I'll never mind. <laughs> okay. It's my problem and it's fixed now. Thank you. I appreciate your patience. Oh, no problem. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and close this, uh, but you guys have this document and if you guys have any more questions, always let me know. OK. Let's see. All right, I think we're back to normal, so I'll pass it on to Emma and I think she has um, the financial report that she'll show, share with you guys. OK, so I'm going to start with the uh, financial report. And then I think um, there was a request from the part of the board regarding some expenses. So I have that next. Um, the first one, if you guys can see my presentation, is regarding um, is end of uh, as end of the month, November 30th, 30th financials um, since December is not closed, so I don't have that data yet. Um, as far as revenue goes, we're sitting at about 4.8 in revenue with um, all the golf courses are pretty close to on par to each other. The highest to Auburn and then the next is tax 
and it follows by SM at Mac. And again, the, the total is about 4.8 million. And on expense side of it, we have about 3.8. And then I have auto breakdown for expenses as well. I can uh, share the PowerPoint after we're done here. And it gave us net PNL sitting at about 1 million. Um, and the, as far as breakdown for admin, it's very similar like before um, the admin charge and safety charge for the fourth quarter is not administered yet. So it will show up more, um, it will go up uh, but end of December. So I will give update on that as well uh, once December is closed. And as far as year to year, year to year comparison, um, for 2021, uh, we're sitting at one point, uh, about 1 million, uh, like we, like I just said, and then for 2020, at a, by the end of month, November, we're sitting close to half million. And for 2019, we were at negative almost half million. Um, so it, which matches to everything we talk about, the rounds and it's better uh, customer demands for golf. Um, so that's what I have for uh, revenue and expense and PNL reports. Um, if you have questions, let me know. If not, I will jump on to the next project for the expense. <clears throat> okay, I don't. So to help out a little bit with uh, Emma, um, Nancy, you had asked in regards to uh, something I've been bragging about that we've been putting money back into the courses and we put money back in the courses from a couple different angles and one of them we talked about already was the equipment replacement fund which had a I'm using some ballpark numbers but was roughly about uh, 350,000 and we spent over 300,000 on some new mowers um, we also had money left over from last year as, as Emma had demonstrated uh, we had a $400,000, $450,000 balance. And with that money, um, we are able to make repairs to clap uh, to the pond, which is going to happen this this uh, coming spring. And we made the repairs over at uh, over at Tex with the roof and the uh, HVAC. And then we've been making some uh, steady repairs on all the irrigation pumps that I keep talking about. So. This is what Emma's going to share with everybody right now. So a couple different pots of money because one was from last year, one was from the equipment replacement fund, and one is from uh, this year's revenues. And and then we're going to do the same thing again next year uh, with the, uh, the proceeds that we have at the end of this year. So we can put that money back into the golf courses. All right, Emma. Okay, so I'm going to start with a bigger picture on high level where the funds uh, were spent. So um, there is golf funds we're spending about uh, by spending. I mean, there is actual, which means it's already paid. There's encumbrances, which means we already cover all the money um, to pay and then planning, which means we have budgeted for it, but we haven't um, have a vendor or encumbrance the funds to pay for it because we're still in the planning phase, but we have money to pay for it. So when that comes up together, we're sitting about 950,000, 947,000, some change. Um, and we also spend, Troy would like to want to mention this one is the, the tree contract. So we spent about 200, a little bit over 200,000 on tree removal contract. And that was actually paid out of forestry, but it's benefiting uh, golf. So that would be put into consideration since it is benefiting golf. So that gave us total about 1.1, 1, 1, 1, 149,000 some change. So where the money comes from, I don't want to get into all the information about individual invoices, but just uh, uh, lump sum. So again, we're looking at, let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see better. So we're looking at actuals because question was asked in the past, hey, when do you guys pay for invoices? When is it showing? So when I present those PN, at net PNL, um, they're actuals. So unless we'll pay for them, unless service provided, product is delivered, we don't pay for them. So they're not actuals. So any money that's in here is part of the, the financial statement, the PNL I presented. Um, so this is the actual we have spent with different things. Uh, I talk about irrigations, uh, mowers, turf products. Um, all those are the grinders. Um, 
repairs, emergency repairs, and it goes from 2021 to 2020. And then again, there are encumbrances as well. The money we already cover all the money to pay for. Um, it has different pumps and different uh, emergency repairs and uh, et cetera. And um, they're also planning phase. So for planning phase, we have, I know for sure, because I just got this requisition, it's about 30,000 uh, from surgeon drilling for uh, the motor replacement is emergency. And then um, I think David put together this little spreadsheet on the project he um, got information for that needs to be done. So that's where the 280,000 coming from, which is why it's falling under planning. Um, so that's where the 1.1 million comes from. And just to clarify that that last uh, item uh, Emma put up, <clears throat> yeah, 280,000. That's the work that's happening over at CLAP. So that's the repair to the um, uh, the ponds and the repairs to the bridges that that we're doing out there. Uh, Troy, yes, this is Ron Reese. I, I I know you meaning to say McDonald on those repairs I'm, to the ponds and bridges. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, thanks for for fixing me. I appreciate that. <laughs> OK, well, that's all I have, really. Uh, do you have some questions for me? So Nancy, we, we wanted to get get you the, your answers and, and this is probably really fast. But uh, mm -hmm. if you want to take a look at those documents, we can get them to you and you and I can sit down and go through it a little bit more if you want. But uh, I just wanted you to know that the stuff I've been bragging about is really happening. Yeah, yeah, and and I had no doubt of that. I just wanted to see it. You know what the lists were. I, you know, you throw out numbers, and I just wanted to see it yeah. uh, written. And I think that's a, a good report for us to see, sure. probably on a regular basis. See, okay, good. We can see exactly where it's going. Yeah, thank you for doing that. Appreciate it. You're welcome. A anytime. Let's see. I think somebody's got a question. Mr. Schordorf, you got a question? Um, not a question. Just uh, to let you know, I was um, uh, some other uh, things that I've been doing. Um, uh, it, I I was able to pull up uh, four different golf courses that were well into. Uh, uh, seven figures on uh, concessions and I called them and said how is it you're doing this and they said that the the first thing is to um, is to really work at it to supply the right stuff and and uh, they, they all said that you gotta you gotta have really good cards out in the field but they said once you have that then you really enforce your uh, no um, uh, contraband, um, you know, outside um, uh, food and beverages, uh, even to the point where you go up, to, you know, you have a ranger where it goes up to uh, um, a, uh, a cart and ask him to uh, throw it away. Uh, it gets around really fast. And they said that it will, the, the, the amount of money you'll make will really shoot up but he said you can't do it unless you do it together in tandem. But uh, all four of them said that that was their uh, the key to, to uh, making seven figures. So that's just for what it's worth. And all right, thank you. Any other questions? All right, I think we go back to the agenda. Let's see what's next. Oh, continuation of prior business. So we're talking a little bit about the golf management services updates. So um, we're still in negotiation with Kemper. Uh, we've had some really good discussions about uh, the future of golf and, and they have brought up some really good questions and we've also addressed some of the issues that have come up in the Facebook live as well as the uh, um, uh, I'm not sure what what we call it the, the workshop that goes virtually the workshop that we've been getting a lot of comments back 
And so we're definitely uh, um, answering a lot of those questions. I think there's a lot of misinformation that we had the opportunity to uh, correct and make sure that we get the right information out. Um, so the plan, what it looks like, and we were a little bit in the fast track, but I think it's good that we slowed down a little bit. My first priority right now is to finish the ice rink contract and because I do have a deadline to get that done by the 18th and I'm going to be doing a presentation on the ice rink to council on the 18th, um, which will push this golf item into February. So in February for the golf advisory committee meeting as well as the park board meeting, I'll be bringing in more information about the contract, the draft contract after we get some really strong commitments back and forth from Kemper and, and us. And so we have a solid draft and then I can really uh, tell you guys exactly what is in that contract and what kind of concerns you guys might have about that contract. So and then we'll take it to the park board and then from there we'll take it to council. Um, so it doesn't look like we'll go to council until March 1st. Uh, that's kind of where we're kind of looking at it and I think the next park board meeting is uh, February 14th. So um, and I think we do have a golf advisory committee meeting before that. So everything seems to be lining up and we'll be make, making sure we get all those pieces of information to everybody as we move along. So but uh, on the call we have Mr. Tui and we also have uh, Mr. Blake on the call. So um, at this point in time I'm going to ask them if they want to share any information or if you guys have any questions of them. Um, and, and obviously we're still in negotiations. There's a little something that maybe we can share or can't share, but um, you know, if there's any kind of major concerns or thoughts or, or suggestions, um, I, I think uh, it, it would be worth our time to talk about that. Hey guys, uh, one of the concerns um, that I keep hearing uh, from community members and constituents um, are the Saturday tournaments. Um, I'd, I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on um, having Saturday, you know, charitable tournaments or, or what what have you, scramble tournaments, if you will. Um, what what are your thoughts on that? What's that looking like? Um, something that that we can pass forward to the golf community. Uh, Eddie, I'll take a shot at that. You know, th this is a topic, an example of a topic that we really don't have uh, much information about so that, uh, you know, if and when we end up getting this uh, deal done and we come on board, we would uh, sit down with a committee and get input and, and uh, you know, determine what is, uh, you know, what's the best way to go. So. It's just, you know, there are a lot of things, little nuances like this that we just don't have the information on yet. Sure, thank you. I have a question about the water, uh, and, and it just triggered it when I saw the report that you had sent out about um, the water bill that at McDonald this past month uh, would, if this were to go through, would Kemper be paying for the water for the golf courses from the city? Troy, do you want to take that or you want me to? I'll take that. Um, so yes, they'll be paying for the um, all, all the utilities, including uh, gas, phone, electric, and whatnot. But if you recall, uh, one of the things that's really going to make a huge difference is the repair on the pond. So that pond is really going to have a huge impact on the irrigation system. This past month, um, prior to our little bit of tiny snow that we got today, we've been really, really dry. And um, I, I know that Mr. Reese wanted to get some extra water on the courses uh, beginning of December and back in November. And so we did spend a little bit more money than what we expected on, on water. Um, but uh, um, you know, we, we have to make sure that we have grass, and that includes even in, in the wintertime, 
especially on the greens, we got to put in a little bit of extra water when, when it's so dry and so warm. So. Uh, Troy, this has been, you know, I mean, the water bill is an operating expense of the golf course. Mm -hmm. Kemper Sports doesn't really pay for it. Uh, you know, that's just another operating expense that uh, that's incurred by the operation. My point on that is it's it's part of the the city doesn't have the, the direct uh, payment on it, but it comes out of the operating expense. Yes, you are correct. Uh, just a different different way of wording it. Yeah. See Michael's hand up. Yeah, hey, uh, Ben and, and probably Chris, and this question may or may not be fair and may or may not be somewhat leading. Um, I'm not on this council for talking about a bunch of economic impact and reading through P&Ls. That's not necessarily my strong suit, but um, I think I come with a unique background in uh, kind of, I'll say, you know, modern or newer wave of, of what golf has become and is becoming. Um, just curious, and, and if no is the answer, I, I, I have no expectation, but just curious if you guys are following kind of some of the trends in, you know, public golf, not necessarily just municipal golf, but in, in municipal golf with places like Winter Park 9 or Sweetens Cove or Sand Valley, um, you know, Landman up in Nebraska, the Cradle out at Pinehurst tobacco road in North Carolina. There's a lot of examples of a lot of places doing really interesting things that are grabbing a lot of really interesting attention in the golf world. And I would say probably in the younger demographic of the golf world. I'm, I'm just curious if you guys are seeing those things outside of just your book and kind of what you've learned with this revolution uh at least in my eyes of, of some of the change that golf has seen as an experiential event not just uh an 18 holes you know shake hands and call it good just curious no no right or wrong answer yeah I, let's uh i think josh lesnick the president of uh kemper sports is on on this call and he's uh he's at the forefront of those kind of things uh all the way back to the the original uh, par three at Band and Dunes, which sort of started the trend. So, Josh, you want to sort of take a take a stab at that? Yeah, sure. Um, I apologize, my my camera, my laptop is docked, so my camera's not on. I apologize, but can you hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Michael. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, the answer is yes. We're very uh, aware of all of that. And as Benny said, um, frankly, um, you know, a lot of the things you mentioned, the crate, well, you mentioned Sand Valley, which we manage and we were involved with before the first bit of sand was ever moved. Um, we've been involved with Band and Dunes since uh, 1997, before, you know, when Mr. Kaiser had just purchased the property and built to preserve and the punch bowl and you know the punch bowl uh, um tom pashley's a good friend of mine from pinehurst and i brought him to bandon several times and he ended up building the cradle and their putting course um machinella is a is a very close friend of mine and i uh, was involved with him at winter park nine um so to answer your question yes we see it we're involved in it. We consult on many of the projects. Um, Goat Hill Park, uh, my good friend John Ashworth, um, as you probably know, the lore laid in, laid down in front of a bulldozer. They were going to bulldoze that golf course, um, and and that became Goat Hill Park, which now has a has a brand of its own. Um, and so, yeah, Landman, seen that, and you know, of course. Everyone's seen uh, the nine hole one down in Knoxville. They've built a great brand for themselves. And <clears throat> yeah, I, I think there's potential in Wichita, you know, especially with the with the two more downtown locations to there's really, you know, that was one of the reasons I was first attracted to uh, this project um, was, um, you know, thinking that there was some opportunity to do something a little different and, and kind of hit on that sort of cutting edge public golf 
Um, Benny and I had actually talked quite a bit about that. And I think that would be, you know, part of our marketing plan. Um, um, you know, maybe not all four of the courses, they're all a little different, but I, I think that's something we would bring to it that maybe all four should have a little different brand and part of brand and marketing is price and maybe a little different price and a little different brand. And, you know, maybe one of the pro shops should be a link sold pro shop and, and, you know, just things like that. I think there's a lot of unique new things we can do. And so, yes, we're into it. We love it. We'd love to hear more of your thoughts. Um, and hopefully the golf committee can be a part of, you know, make helping to build those brands in Wichita. Yeah, I, I appreciate that feedback. Uh, and, and again, you know, uh, we, we talk about a lot of tangible things and, and we have to, um, but I, I think Wichita has always had a unique opportunity maybe, uh, from the intangible things around culture and community and, and, uh, the environment. So glad to hear that. I've, I've pitched getting Matt on this call before, uh, before you guys in the RFP had even went out. I, I think he's a great ambassador of uh what we're all trying to do here which is to you know improve municipal golf and affordable golf and public golf so uh glad you guys are keyed in on that i appreciate the the context yeah yeah great and i don't i don't want to jump ahead but i you know i think sim has a great you know is a great example of a course that one of the first things i saw i, I thought was gosh we got to get you know maddie g here and john ashworth and let them see you know there's some so great opportunities there to build some brands, um, not only in Wichita and regionally, but even nationally. I mean, people now travel to see all kinds of different golf courses. They're not just looking for the top 100, you know, bag tag collectors. They're looking for really unique golf experience. And I think I think you all have that potential if it's marketed the right way. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Yep. All right, Eddie, I'll pass this on to you. Cool. If there's uh, no more questions for our friends at Kemper, um, we can move forward to the uh, pro updates. Don't see any. Um, I don't care who starts. I'll go down my list here uh, with Steve. Steve, are you with us? Yes, sir. Um... Not a whole lot going. I mean, we had a busy December, wrapped up uh, obviously a great year. Uh, I think 1999 was the last time we went over 50,000 rounds. So um, it's nice to see all the business and everything uh, heading in the right direction, pretty much setting up leagues and tournaments, uh, kind of tying some things down for 2022, making sure I have all those booked um, and just waiting for warm weather again. Cool. We are too. Colin? Yeah, like Steve, I'm booking a lot of tournaments and leagues for next year. Um, I was also very happy to see the rounds report. Uh, we did about 46,000 rounds in 2021 at SIM, which uh, was really good. And um, uh, just looking forward to another really good next year. So I think, I think it's going to be awesome. Fantastic. Uh, Scott? Echoing what Steve and Colin said, you know, 2021 record rounds. Last year was a record round with 36,000, roughly 37,000 in 2020. This year we did just shy of 43,000 for smashing last year's record. As far as moving forward with 2022, as I told the team yesterday, 2022 outings and events for 2022 are significantly improved over 2021, which was a banner year, even surpassing 2019. So a lot of positives moving for 2022, just trying to tie up loose ends for, for this year and get a little bit of a break before the weather breaks and we're back at it next week. Awesome. I'll uh, I'll give Ron Reese since you're with us, I believe. Ron, do you want to update us on anything? Uh, well, yeah, I will. Uh, a couple things that's been talked about, the expenses coming up at McDonald. We have a meeting uh, 
we finally got the information back from the engineers that were drawing up all the plans for the uh, rebuilding of the dams and bridges and new bridges at McDonald. Uh, we'll meet next Wednesday to go over that. Uh, if the plans look good, it'll get uh, sent on out to uh, issue a uh, bid document. Uh, hopefully that should only take a couple weeks and uh, you know, this work, hopefully I would like to see it done in February because uh, probably the back nine will be closed most of the days when they're out there working. So if we can get it done in February before the golf season really rolls, um, that would be good. So uh, yeah, and it'll it'll make a difference on our, our uh, water holding capabilities. I've uh, actually, I've been at home since Tuesday. I'm on a COVID uh, deal, so I'll be back in the office Monday. I was working on a... Uh, spreadsheet showing how much water we've been able to use from those additional ponds uh, up until 2018 when the overflows were you know leaking and no longer working like they should so uh, yeah it, it, it's a cost savings it's I think I've averaged about six to seven million gallons of water I could use from those ponds every year I mean it depends on rainfall and the time of the rainfall but uh, it's a uh, yeah it'll pay for itself over eight to ten years so that's a that's a good thing. Uh, something else on the driving range comparison. Uh, I don't know if it's been shared with you guys. Uh, I've been talking to Tom West with First Tee. They're gonna. They're hoping to start construction of their building uh, March 1st. And when that's done, uh, the hitting mats that we use for fall, winter, and early spring, because the Bermuda tee box right now we have 10 hitting mats. Once that building is completed, we'll have an additional eight hitting mats. So uh, that will help to increase our revenue on the driving range also. So that'll be a good thing. Great, thank you. Yep. I'll You're open welcome. it up to any questions. I see Niall's hand is up. Is the mic working? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, I just wanted to ask uh, uh, Scott and some of the other um, Pros, given the uh, we've we've talked a lot about staff shortages uh, during this time, and um, I wanted to ask if they've been able to keep up with the uh, the overseeding and the uh, um, the punching of the greens during the spring and fall of last year, and um, if uh, they've been able to. Uh, uh, managed to do that given some of the staff shortages that we've been hearing about. Anybody can speak up on that if they want to. Yeah, Niall, I can speak for Tex. I know um, we did get all of our maintenance done in the fall, uh, airification, that kind of stuff, being a little shorthanded. Um, I do know Seth uh, is starting to work on all his equipment and get it rebuilt for next year. and. Um, I think he's really feeling the staff shortage right now with that, just trying to get it all done before spring hits. But as far as maintenance on the golf course, we were able to get all the normal stuff done. I'm sure Seth would like to do some extra things, um, but we, we were able to get all the normal stuff done. What about Scott? How's things going out there? Well, now that's, I'm going to speak for Ron. I mean, most of the, the basic stuff was done, greens and, and surrounds, um, based on the staffing that Ron had this year. We didn't get to the air find the Zoysia fairways or the tees like he'd anticipated and we've done in the past. But again, that's all based on, you know, two full-time employees working on the golf course and, and the inability to, you know, get staff trained to take care of those specific needs. So, Everything else from the basic standpoint, Ron got accomplished, but one of the bigger demands and it's time consuming is to air find the T's and fairways. All right. Anybody else? Any more questions for pros? Don't see any. Um, I don't necessarily have a president's update other than everybody just stay safe out there. Um, thanks for 
um, working with us on the fly today. Uh, decided to, to move this meeting virtual out of an abundance of caution uh, with the COVID stuff going on right now. Um, so appreciate everybody being able to hop on and spend about an hour of your time with us today. So thanks for that. I just want to add uh, thank you for your time and, and being flexible. Um, and we want to be responsive. And so, you know, like Nancy had sent us a question yesterday and we were able to pull some numbers together. If you guys have any questions or thoughts or concerns, please email me and we'll do our best to make sure to present it. You know, you don't always think about everything at the meeting. Uh, if you're like me, I always it always comes to me when I'm in the shower. What am I going to do today? And all these ideas come up and questions and thoughts. So um, feel free to email us and, and we'll try to answer any and all your questions. So, thanks. Niall, did you have? Yeah, something? just just one quick one was, did, did you expect to uh, finalize your negotiations and have a contract to, ready to take to the council before our next meeting? Yes, so as I talked about earlier, um, we have this whole month of January to finalize with, with Kemper, a good solid draft. We'll bring that to the Golf Advisory Committee um, at the beginning of February, which is okay. And then All it goes right. through it goes through the uh, um, park board after that, and then March first is when we take it to council. So it should follow. Um, so we'll have we'll have another meeting before the finalizations. Yeah, you'll in, have in February. Yep, you'll have the first opportunity okay. before the park board. You and probably board mentioned board. that earlier while I was having trouble with. Uh, getting this thing to work, but I appreciate again your patience on that. No. Oh yeah, no problem. I want to add one thing and, and so uh, First T had asked us if we could change their contract for the building that Mr. Reese was talking about. Uh, what was in the contract is a 10 year lease of the property, not the building because they're building, building the building and then with another 10 year option on that. So they could get the financing that they need. They wanted a 20 year uh, contract. And so on Monday, I'll be taking that to the park board. And from staff's perspective, we, we know that First Tee is gonna be supportive and be around and be part of the golf environment for a long time. So we're gonna change that one little detail in the contract so they could get financing for uh, their building. So just wanna make sure in case you guys hear about that, uh, it's on the agenda for the park board. So just one little thing. Nancy. I wanted to ask about when we get to take a look at the uh, proposed contract before, will we get it enough in advance of our meeting next month that we will get to peruse through it before we're together? I'm hoping so. If, okay. Once I get a good draft and, okay. you know, obviously I, we have our Kemper folks here on the call. Um, you know, it's both of us that we need to come up and, and finalize all the little details and once that happens I'll be happy to share it with you guys in draft form um, doesn't necessarily mean that it's the final final but uh, that way you guys can take a look at it and ask some questions and or we can provide explanations for some of the items that might be in the in the contract all right thank you yep I see Michael's hand up as well Michael did you have something Eddie, that's up there from earlier. My bad. Okay. Thought so. <laughs> Figured I'd give you an opportunity. All right. If nobody has anything else, uh, we can adjourn. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Be safe. Thank you very much. Wear, wear your mask and get a shot. See you. Yeah. <laughs>